So in many ways, ISD Austria um, pursues novel approaches, both when it comes to performing and managing research, but also when it comes to translating science to applications on and around our campus. We have a pretty clear goal of where we want to go, and there was a goal that was already set out in the very beginning in the first report that was written about IST 10 years ago um, of building a top scientific institution with all the prerequisites it, uh, it needs, but also embedded in an, in an innovative ecosystem, attracting companies here, doing research that's also uh, meaningful in, in, in industry, um, attracting companies here, making sure that our graduates uh, also go out and do industry jobs. This is not about Stanford or MIT or Harvard, it's about the model. It's about putting universities at the center of the growth model of Austria, of Europe, of the world. The traditional model is universities on the front, at the edge, providing students a little bit of intellectual property, Forschung. It's very rare, it's a very unusual model to have universities such as Stanford, MIT, Berkeley, actually being drivers, direct drivers im Kern of Wirtschaftswachstum, creating new products, new jobs, new companies. So for drug discovery, for a novel, successful treatment, uh, you need two major ingredients. Uh, one is high innovation potential, which is usually lying in academia. And the second one is then the robustness in industry uh, to make it uh, to the product. And so in principle, it would be just very simple to mix these two ingredients. But unfortunately, in our areas, this is not as simple. Um, there are many reasons, cultural differences, particular incentive differences, and so on. Innovation is about solving customer problem and solving a need in the marketplace and finding somebody who is willing to pay for that. Yeah? It's not technology, it's innovation, and innovation is just something uh, when it's also accepted by the customer. Mm -hmm. So we can have great ideas, which the people uh, working in R&D like, but there must be behind a business model. Otherwise, it's for nothing. For me, the motto is combining the strength. Yeah, combining the strength in their teams, in their research, uh, within the industrial application. And unfortunately, as you can see from these long development times, it needs also quite a bunch of money. And this is additional money. The future, also for hardware-driven companies, is software. Broadly speaking, Europe tremendously underinvests in universities, but computer science in particular needs to be strengthened because it is fundamental, not just as a discipline, but computer science and data are now becoming fundamental to the conduct of science in every single discipline. Physics, chemistry, biology. It cuts across all the fecha. We, from the industrial, from the business side, tell to the science, it's important that we have science, but it's important that people walk across this bridge and join our business community uh, and really try to earn money from real business problems, which of course often are also science problems. Building innovation culture inside the university is extremely important. Student engagement is critical. We need the students, the research students, the PhD students, to be actively engaged uh, in entrepreneurship, in creativity, in leadership positions, in organizing events. If we make a big step in under, you know, answering one of these fundamental questions, there should be, in an ideal case, very many applications that result from that. So I'm not the one who's going to pursue all these different directions, but you know, I'll pass on the knowledge, hopefully, and then others um, who are more driven by applied things, and these may be my students, um, can, can continue that. One cannot really, you know, very strictly separate actually uh, basic, basic research and applications. It's, it's definitely always a mix uh, that comes together and uh, these uh, uh, basic research questions actually fuel very interesting applications in the future. This uh, role in the society so that as a scientist I just don't have to um, accomplish my own curiosity, but also to accomplish something that is useful for, for, for the mm -hmm. others. First, uh, it's a privilege to be a scientist. 
right? And second, it's a responsibility, right? So you, you, you do that because you're curiosity-driven, but if there is an opportunity to return to society, you should, you should actually really do that, because it is a privilege, and society supports us. The interdisciplinary environment of IST kind of really helped me to, to get a really broad um, technological background, and uh, which now allows me to, to uh, promote and support um, the protection of, of technolo technological inventions in a very broad field. There is a very, very high flexibility um, to get here and to use the environment. We will build um, yeah, on the great material science footprint that is here. We will use the clean room. We will uh, use lab space here, office space, of course. And that is pretty unique, you know, that we can have all of this in, uh, I would say, really, I mean, um, top quality. For us, it is essential to be grounded and to have the connection to science and you know to have the exchange of our people um, with the scientists who are here. I'm really very, very much looking forward to this. If you have an ecosystem where a lot of smart people can sit down and follow their passion, be it in fundamental science or translation into industry and then actually making products to, to sell them, uh, everything will be good. Thank you very much for coming and thank you to the panelists.